Okay, hello everybody. Uh, Lisa Larson here. I'm here with Pete Castro. Hi, Pete. Hello. How are we doing? Real good. Very good. We're gonna. This is our second in a series of um, my book. I used to be called Podcast Pete. Okay, we- I apologize. Podcast Pete. I wasn't yeah. sure where we were going with that or not yeah. going with that. Okay, we're going with that. That's a thumbs up. Look- I'm sorry. Hello, everybody. I'm here, and I'm here with Podcast Pete. Hi, Podcast Pete. Hello there. <laughs> And we are here. We're going to be doing this. Um, this is our second in a series on my book, Pause Talking, A Course in Communicating with Animals. It's a third. And uh, we're going to be talking today about behavioral problems, because I know a lot of, lot of people, they have animals who have behavioral problems. Sometimes they're really behavioral problems. Sometimes they might be something to do with the people. Sometimes they might be to do with other things. So um, I know, Pete, that you've been going through the book and reading this. Uh, Where are you on this? Have you gone to that chapter yet? Or I'm loving the book. And this morning, I approached the chapter next of working with people. So pretty soon, uh, I'm on, on my next sit down with your beautiful, wonderful, helpful book and helpful in life as well as uh, loving and understanding the animal nature. Uh, I'll get to that. So, um, you know, my my knowledge of uh, animal behavior is um, sit, stop, stop that. Come on and eat. Let's go outside. Not not elaborate, not very elaborate. So maybe you can give us an overview on why animals have behavioral problems, because reading the book, I know it's detailed now. I know that um, there's a high nature and a high level of attention that animals possess. Uh, you know, I was raised with parents that, that just gave them orders, so I gave them orders. You know, mm. it, it never felt that they could really be um, capable of cross-communicating, uh, let alone understanding. So I'd be all ears on this one, really. Yeah, that's interesting that you say give them orders. And I always say try to look at the animals' lives through their eyes. And how do you feel when you get orders? when somebody's ordering you around. So the interesting thing about behavioral problems is there is there usually one of two reasons. One is either there's a health problem and they you don't know about it, they're trying to tell you that they don't feel well. And that's the reason why I always tell people that it's if there's any behavioral problem going on, that it's a good idea to take your animal to the vet and make sure they've got a clean bill of health. And the other reason is that they are unhappy about something. And this and they they have tried to tell you and tried to tell you in many different ways. And they finally get to the point where they say, now I'm just going to pull out the big guns. And then they start peeing on something or they start getting aggressive or they start doing all of these other things that we prefer they not do. And so I think it's really important for us to understand our role in that, because sometimes it might be something that we're doing that they're unhappy about. And I kind of look at this a lot of times as either a family negotiation or a family therapy session, because you know how if you had a child that that was a problem, you would look at how the whole family works with that. And so sometimes it might be something that an animal is upset about something that their parent, their pet parent is doing, or one of the people in the house, or somebody else, some one of the other animals in the house. And so we have to look at these things on a big picture because there's it's it's really it's not as complicated as we try to make it out to be. And one of the worst things that we can do is just say, you do this or you do that, instead of understanding why and getting to the root of the problem, which is what when what I do when I try to 
work on a behavioral problem. It's what I do when I work with them and talk to them and try to find out what the problem is, what's bothering them so I can understand why they're behaving that way rather than just telling them to change. Well, what are the most common problems that that you have to address uh, when people come to you? Uh, I, I'm just amazed that A, the, uh, animals can be communicated with at this level, let alone, I've never really met an animal communicator, even though I've known you for years. I just didn't know until I started reading your book, how well you can communicate with them. Hmm. Yeah, well, there are a, a, a lot of common problems. I think that probably the most common that people will contact me for the two that I just mentioned uh, in inappropriate elimination. So peeing, pooping, in the wrong place or aggression and but there's a lot of times what's interesting there's a lot of times where people may not understand that it's even a behavioral problem like for instance if two cats sometimes cats will the way the cats play and the way the cats interact look like they're fighting and people think that they're fighting but it's really just play or it's play that's gotten too rough for one of the animals or it starts out as being play and then it gets too too aggressive so there's there's all of these different very fine lines of of differences of what can go on and and sometimes it's just a matter of animals having to work things out for themselves just like kids do you know they have to work things out between siblings um so you know it it's every animal is is completely unique but but those i would say are the most common that i get now uh, as far as insight on these issues is is are there specifics are there actual um uh, rubrics, uh, pathways in, into how people like me can have a better understanding of these things? Well, yeah, like I say, I, I think specifically each animal is different. And that's why I say if we can start to look through their eyes, if we can train ourselves to put ourselves in the place of the animal and see, see feel and think about what they are seeing, thinking and feeling. And, and, and put ourselves in their place, then that goes a long way. Because a lot of times they may be behaving in a way that they're upset about something that nobody's actually done in the household, but they're picking up on the energy. So for instance, if one person, let me step back here for a second. One of the most, you, you asked one of the most common things. A very common situation I get a lot of times is that an animal will start mis. I don't want even want to say misbehaving, uh, behaving in a way that we would prefer they not, peeing on things or be, getting aggressive or whatever. And I find that that animal has been in a household with one person for many years. And then that person meets somebody. Let's say it's, it's they're with a woman and that person meet somebody and gets a new boyfriend and then the new boyfriend or new husband doesn't like the animal well maybe that person does all of the things they function they don't physically mistreat the animal but they really despise the animal and they want the animal gone well the animal can pick that up and What's worse is when the person, the mom, let in this case, who has been that per, that animal's mom for so many years, doesn't defend the animal. Or maybe they have a child and then the animal gets put into the garage. And then people can't figure out why the animal is is 
acting out? Well, because how would you feel if somebody came into, if, into your life and disrupted your life you had a life that you loved, a person that you loved, and then all of a sudden you were cast out into the garage. So there's so many different situations. So first and foremost, I think it's, it's incumbent upon us to understand that they have all the same feelings that we do. They experience all the same emotions that we do. It's just that they, they don't know how to express it in the same way we do. They express it in the only way that they know how. So I think that's probably the most important thing. I, I mean, I did mention before, it's important to take your animal to the vet to make sure that that's not an issue. And that's always the, one of the first things that I tell people before I even talk to an animal. But like I say, if they're in good health, you want to understand that family dynamic and then and then consider that this is kind of like a, a therapy, a family therapy or something like that. Now, the other thing is. Not all issues are necessarily behavioral problems. I had one person call me and she was beside herself because her cats were crying and getting under her feet while she was feeding them. That's what cats do. I mean, that's what they do. We can train them to not do that, but we do have to understand that there are certain things that are just natural to animals that, that we can't ask them not to do. I mean, I can ask them, they're not gonna do it. Um, I've had this situation before where they've said, can you ask my cat not to get on the table while we're eating dinner? And I'll say, well, do they, are they allowed on the table when you're not eating dinner? Oh, yes. When we're not in, eating dinner, it's fine. But cats can't make that distinction. Either you have to teach them not to get on the table or you can't expect them to to stay off the table while you're eating dinner so there are certain things that understanding and understanding who animals are and how they react to things helps a lot because when your frustration level lowers so does theirs and co consequently so does the behavior usually gets better hmm. does that make sense it does um you know i I guess we we just don't think, uh, well, you know, what it is. We think we are the authority, yes, uh, because we're human beings, and exactly. and so we sort of look down on the quadrupeds and the six leggers and think, well, you know, uh, you're just going to have to be subservient to what I want and do. When in fact, it's more of um, an alliance and how you treat an alliance. I guess. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And and you said it exactly right. We think of ourselves as above them because we are human. But in my view, we're all equal. Now we happen to have brains and thumbs, brains logical, you know, we can use the logic in our brains in in a different way than they use them and and that combined with having thumbs, we create all of this stuff in the world that we live in, the houses, the freeways, the this, the that. But who's to say that's smarter than being able to live off the land? Now we've domesticated these animals so that, you know, cats and dogs so that they live in our world. It's just like the zoos, the early zoos were just enclosures and they were confining and the new model for zoos is natural habitat, uh, spacious accommodations where the animals can still be viewed by children and people who would never otherwise be able to see them live, I suppose. Yeah, you would hope. The, the better ones are like that. The better yeah. ones are like that, you know. Um, but again, it's man's authority that, that gave them that. It's, it's man's idea you know well i'm going to improve this well it only took how many years for them to think of that but whatever well, ex 
exactly. Well, and and I I had a conversation. There was a, a client I had who had a pet flying squirrel. Wow. And one of the things that that squirrel taught me, and and I talked to that squirrel when he was in spirit, is that's the the thing that he said. He says, you know he took me into his world to see what it was like to be a woodland creature. And he said, we don't need all of that stuff that you, that you humans need. We live, we work with the land. We work with everything. We don't use it all up. We work with it and, and, and incorporate our lives into it and live with it. Yeah. We don't rearrange it. We don't rearrange it. Yeah exactly and put up a parking lot <laughs> yes and there's probably a lot of people that don't understand that but i do <laughs> <laughs> okay well i think it's probably time for pete's ponderings well pete's ponderings today is going to feature the fact that children probably have an acute sense of what they need to do around pets especially half their size uh so I had a little job uh, in junior high handing out handbills for a patio builder neighbor who was a contractor, and I got my younger brother to help me, and the dogs sort of uh, inhibited us uh, when we went in their yards, and they didn't let us hand out all the handbills. So the next week, the next Saturday, um, I had gone to the store first and got a big box of dog biscuits, and I got some paper bags, and I doubled them, and I tucked them in my belt, and I tucked them in my little brother's belt. And I poured half the dog biscuits in his bag and half in mine. And my instructions were, when you see the dog, throw the, throw the biscuit as far as you can so you can get the handbill on the doorknob and go to the next house. And I'll meet you at the end of the street. And I'm figuring, this is just genius. It's just genius. But what happens was, uh, you know, I spent part of my profits on the dog biscuits. So that's, that's a business lesson. But secondly, uh, my dogs, uh, I turned them all into, into Britons. They, they became English because they all went after my biscuits. And I was in Little League. I was a pitcher. I threw a well. And, you know, so if they could speak English, they would have all said, biscuits. <laughs> and then my brother turned a big German Shepherd into Elvis Presley. Because by the time I found out that he hadn't finished his street and found out that he was only on the second house and a big German Shepherd, half his height, had his head all the way in my brother's bag. And ate all the biscuits. So my brother turned that dog into Elvis Presley. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So, you know, we, we, we grow up to manipulate. We grow up to leverage. We don't really grow up to, I guess, think to understand first, okay, we're in their yard. How do we do yes. this? Maybe we should think, thank you for letting me be in your yard and have that mentality because they do read body language, don't they? They, they not only read body language, they feel the energy. And, you know, that is one of the things, getting on a serious note, that's one of the things that I am really, really uh, adamant about is people teaching their kids how to respect and, and, and approach animals the animals in your house and the animals outside. I mean, we hear about these kids. Every time I hear about a child being attacked by a dog, they always assume that it's just a vicious dog. But my question is, what did the, what did the child do to inspire that dog to bite? Because the dog doesn't know any other way to say no than to growl or to bite. And if that kid didn't listen to the growl or the or that the body language. The body language, then the then the then they it it escalates. And yeah. and unfortunately a lot of the animals get put down because of that. Yet it's because people haven't taught kids to respect and treat them appropriately and in and, and like i say either out in the world or in the house as well I, I mean i don't know how many times i have to tell 
um, people when I'm talking to their animals, it's like, you need to tell your, your five-year-old or your three-year-old, don't do puppy, 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 and hit them on the back hard because that's what kids do. They don't know any better, but they need to be taught. And if they aren't able to be taught or if they're too young to be taught, then you need to protect the animal because it's, it, it's, it's going to protect your child as well. Right. And they're territorial. They're, they're, they, they protect their area. Yeah. And, and they may not be aggressive animals at all, but they can't possibly know that otherwise. And I'll end with this, uh, cause it's, it's a perfect example. I had a, uh, I had a woman call me. It was a, a regular client and this is in the book. A regular client called me and she said, can you please talk to this dog? He's in the divorce shelter. And a divorce shelter in California is one of the worst high kill shelters in California. And she said they're going to be putting them down in, in a couple of days because he's too aggressive to adopt out. And I just don't feel like that's the case. So I talked to the dog and the dog said to me, well, of course I'm aggressive. They're going to kill me. And I don't want to die. And so I told her she got a person to release the dog because she got it. She wasn't part of a rescue, but she got a rescue organization to release the dog. And she just opened the door to her car. The dog jumped in the front seat and they were best friends for the next eight years. The dog just passed uh, a few months ago, but they were best friend for eight years. So they're responding when you get these egregiously aggressive behavior, yeah. then there's, there's usually a, a, a reason behind it. Yeah, okay. so it, it might not be the absence of behavior. It it might be a res, a behavioral response to something. A behavioral response, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm seeing that it's it's about time to to close up here. Um, I want to thank everybody. I I want to mention again if you're interested more in about uh, behavioral problems, you can take a look at my book. Pause talking, of course, and communicating with animals. Uh, I'm also teaching classes starting next week if you're interested, and I'll put the links in the in the description here. Uh, and next time we're going to be talking about animal anxiety and PTSD. So again, it's it, that's that in and itself is not a behavioral issue, but that can lead to behavioral issues. So we might want to look at that. So um, I thank you. I thank you, Pete. Any last words? No, I, I think uh, it's it's a beautiful gift you have, and it needs to be given to others uh, so that it can be given to animals. <laughs> thank you. Okay, well, thank you guys. Uh, if you are enjoying this, uh, we'd really appreciate it if you would hit that like button and the subscribe. And if you want to be notified of new new videos, hit the bell. And and please comment. Let us know what you think. If you have any suggestions on topics, we're happy to listen and, and hopefully cover them soon. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye bye.